Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. We're playing Prosperous Portugal in Europa Universalis 4. It's been a few days since I played this. I actually missed a session, a video, yesterday because I was playing too much MNT. Also, I have a lot of EU4 campaigns going right now. I realized uh, I think I have like five, six actual campaigns going right now. Let me just think. I've got um, Ideas Guy, Ryukyu, I've got this one, I've got the multiplayer one with Filthy. And I'm playing MNT, so it's five. Yeah, five. Five campaigns. It's a lot going at once, so it's really hard to keep track of everything that's going on when you have that many. Um, does he have that fort turned on? He does. That is defensive terrain, so let's wait until he marches over there and then we'll go fight him. Nikolaus. Nikolaus, so one three. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, um,. So, yeah, we need to improve relations with people and stuff and things. And how are we doing on subject slots? Or relationship slots, rather. We got 5 out of 5. Oyo leading vassal, Joloff. 127 leading vassal. Oyo. You have a core. Benin. Truce. Truce. No truce on Zazu. No claim on Zazu. And no truce on Mali. Ali is allied to Songhai and Katsina. Katsina, so Songhai is usually fairly strong, or they, they can become strong, but it looks like, based on these two fonts, that uh, Songhai might not be very strong. Actually, yeah, this is this is part of Katsina, not Songhai. Usually in my campaign, Songhai seems to go pretty crazy. But, um, yeah, oh well. So, if he has no truce, we have no truce with him, and he's got a multiple fort on our border, we should pretty much attack him, right? We got these rebellion... Issues down here. Tangier's got a little bit of unrest. Should go away. I don't think that's going to last. We're still slightly overextended. And we have some intolerance. Where the disunity could be better. So, yes. If we get Mpemba converted, that'll probably bring up religious unity enough. Worst case scenario, we're ahead of time on military tech. So I could, and I think I will. I think I will just bump up the government strength a little bit. Not to mention, cool, we're in a golden era. So it's only 90 points instead of 100. Let's do that. That should probably bring Tangier back into a number that's acceptable. And uh, we'll keep going. So, I'm pretty excited about how powerful we're going to be in the next uh, probably 19, 18 years, whatever it's going to be, because we're about to finish our last idea, which gets us uh, reduced state maintenance, more money for colonies. We're also going to finish expansion, which allows us to enable the policy colonial expansion, global settler increase plus 20. So, right now, we're at plus 165. It's going to be even higher soon. And we've got three merchants at the moment, or three colonists at the, mo at the moment. I'm apparently working on claims on Congo, even though he's counter-espionaging me, making it practically a waste of time. Okay, so unrest is negative in all of these. Alright, he is marching where he's supposed to. Perfect. It's a fort, so it's going to take him some time to actually siege it down. Let's, uh, follow him and then just take these two provinces back. Actually, the fort in Wolof is taking care of that one. Cool. Assuming we have no debt. Don't have any loans. Oh, you don't have enough money to repay any loans. We do have loans. Why do we have loans? Did I just embrace an institution or something? That doesn't seem right. Oh, that's right. We actually spawned the institution in this campaign. Didn't we? I think so. This guy A is complete. Alright, so... Colonialism. No, we did not. No, that's not spawned yet. I know I spawned an institution in a campaign recently. See, I can't even remember which one it was. Anyway, these two are going to finish. That's going to give us our new colonial nation. That means we have a colonist not back yet. The colonists are here, here, and here. We should be making a lot more money then with that third, that extra colony done. Alright, colonists, colonies. We'll start with the letter C. One of them is at the very bottom, one is, a, one is at the very top. Alright, how important is Cape Coast and why is this not part of a trade company? I feel like when you click on Ivory Coast and say, like, add all provinces to trade company, you should just automatically do that when you colonize a new land. Maybe give you, like, a pop-up asking if you want to do it. That was our mission at one point, wasn't it? May have been. 
still kind of tempted to continue going in Africa, just I don't want Castile to get involved with colonization. On the other hand, Brazil is at 8 size, they've got 8 cities, and they are finishing their... They've just started another one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I start another one for them, then that means we can get to 10 a lot quicker and get that extra merchant. I think I'm going to take this province then. We'll take our colonist who's at Cape Coast. Send him over to here. Right, Moroccan Separatists should be coming down, and the Mapemba guys, they're saying they're going to rebel, but if we finish this conversion, I think we'll be alright. I think we can go speed forward while we wait on a couple things to happen then. Some Kansanjian Separatists. Interesting. And have they occupied a fort? No, not yet. Just other provinces over here. So Congo's got six gate troops. He's trying to get it back. So we know there's an army here. We don't know how strong it is. But it might be enough to take his capital, for sure. And if they take his capital, they're probably going to succeed. Genoa cedes land to the Ottomans. And our truce with Oyo is now up. Oyo being our subject. I want to get started on this war with Morocco. The only claim I have on this is on this guy's capital. Zazao defends him. Zazao doesn't matter. Tech 5, Tech 6, Rizzo Tech 8. How badly do we want to do this war versus the one with the other guy? Actually, am I, I'm a great power in this campaign, aren't I? Oh, yeah. We just, like, threaten you to break your alliance? Yes, we can. We could full annex and feed this to Oyo. And this is all not part of a trade region, so I don't really care about it yet. I mean, whatever, you know. He's getting, I think he's getting a bonus to goods produced, isn't he, from the trade companies? Mm, no. That's that's Merchant Republics. So I'm thinking of something different. Well, I don't really want to tie these troops up with a war over here. So yes, let's just um, let's focus on this war. It's June the 3rd right now. Let's just declare this war. Songhai won't even honor the call. Katsina. I know of Katsina. Ah, okay. See there. I click, <laughs> I click on Dagbon. Now I can find his capital. Cool. So, hey, Katsina, how about you stop being allied to that guy, then? That'd be a no, huh? Alright. So, if he isn't going to be at war with me, he's definitely going to be able to march into my subject. And then onto my fort. Let's get that fort turned on now. We'll wait one more month. Well, now, by the time he could get down there, the fort would already be ticked up by one month. Alternatively, I could just threaten war. Nope. Okay. We're gonna make the war goal burr. Nice. Cape Coast is uh, doing its best to actually complete. Ishin's you. Those were these guys over here. Alright. I'm still working to core this. We have no unrest here. I do have a claim on Belize. This guy didn't want to give me land last time. Okomes. Alright, as soon as we're done with this war, hopefully I'll remember to go look at that. We'll see. Might happen, might not. Tech 4 for him. Really bad. Joloff is losing money. How much debt do they have? 30-some 30, 30 ducats? Yeah, better them than me. Oh, nice. And... Oyo actually has a blocker fort. I didn't realize he had a fort. Cool. Should probably take the time to scout out this guy's lands. And actually... Ah, shoot. The Terran Cagnese is going to slow us down. We, it'll still take like a month to get there. He'll get the reinforcement. Actually, even if he... Even if it didn't, I can't possibly get between here and there in that couple days anyway. So, global trade power plus 10%, sweet. 
update maintenance minus 25%. Sweet. It's going to save us uh, half a duck in a month. That's not bad. I'll take it. And I think we will immer immediately turn that policy on. Didn't this... Wasn't this policy at one point? I could have sworn this used to be a colonist. Am I thinking of a different one? Must be another... Another... Um, policy that gives a colonist. Because I know there there is or was one at one point. Colonists plus one. Yes, no, maybe... They must have changed it at some point. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty positive that it, it did exist. Oh well. All right, so now we have 185 settlers per year, which is pretty good, I hear. The Pemba's at 95% converted, and the rebels are 80% of the way there. Wonder how his rebels are doing. I think they bounce back and forth between these two provinces. We have this button. We're ahead of time on military. How important is it to end this war quickly? Probably not that important. All right. Emperor has enacted an, an imperial reform. Cool. Reich's reform. First one. Okay, so back to conversions. Do we want to try to convert Chakujal? The unrest here is negative eight, so I think we could safely do this. And eventually become a trade uh, colonial nation, so we'd like for them to be stable if we can. They're still at war, so I can't actually do anything yet. But with that conversion, that may have actually freed up these troops. Yes, we have. We need to keep four of them here. No, that's not true. Eight of them need to stay here for now. But when the overextension's gone, that might might be enough. Don't really want to particularly fight that guy yet, but... I say we just end the war with Mali. We don't need to really worry about this guy, although it is level 1 fort. I'm assuming we have military access up there, do we? We have military access through Zazao, so if I could just get onto his level 1 fort, his... his tech 5 would make it very easy to siege down his capital. We could get some cash from him, use that to pay off our loans or finance more colonies, something like that. Alright, I'm actually going to go on to speed 4 for the war. I don't normally like to be on speed 4 while at war, but... It just seems like a very straightforward thing. We okay, lost claims on our subject. Big deal. Okay, provinces we intend to take, we should probably not loot. Also, this is all part of one state, so it's already going to be devastated, but... What do I care about my subject's devastation, right? Able sanction for increased taxes has expired. Yuck. And the nobility are now too powerful. They have 19% control, they only need 15. Unfortunately, based on the way the country's kind of laid out, I can't really... Oh, 14.4? Really? Well, I'm going to do this. We're going to take this away. And they can be disloyal for up to like 18 months. And then we'll eventually have to give something back to them or... I don't know. I'd rather that their their loyalty be close. And then potentially tick up. The clergy need 15. They've got barely enough. The other estates. So, burgers. We can demand diplo points. Not really keen on that. Okay. England disputed succession. Too bad he rivaled me. 48-year-old Denmark. 
Denmark, who has two unions underneath him. Royal marriages with whom? Muscovy. Muscovy has how much development? Why can't you just see development on this screen? Wouldn't that make a whole lot more sense than making you go to the ledger? Alright, I've got 312, Muscovy's got 560, so we can't really do anything with Denmark. Sadly. Very sadly. It would be really cool to get a random union over him. Meanwhile, Savoy, though... Allied to rival... Good royal marriage with Austria. We do beat Austria. We definitely beat Mantua. I have too many diplomatic relations. Do I? Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure I have 5 out of 5. Since when does it count? Um, it didn't used to count that until you were already over the relationship limit. You could go over without having a penalty to the, the reasons for acceptance. And then as soon as you were over it, then yes, it would show a penalty from it. Weird. I have a feeling it's something weird, like uh, it's counting my colonial nation, would be my guess. How much you want to bet? We'll get a second colonial nation, we'll go check on the relationship status with Savoy, and it's going to be like, now you have negative 40 reasons. Because reasons. Alright, I don't really want to be in this war for very long, so... I don't even think I'm going to go down up here to knock out Kasina. Well, let's let's check to see how much cash he's got. He's got 71 ducats. Kitsina makes... They do make 5 ducats a month. That's only 0.5 that I could get in war reps, though. So 0.51 times 120 months. 61 ducats if I get war reps out of him. I don't think it's worth the time. We'll probably lose more men and, and money to attrition if we do that. Coalition may form. Oh, there's a guy with some cash. Well, get him on low enthusiasm, knock down one more fort, and he'll probably be ready to go. Meanwhile, we got a colony at 970. Way I figure, if you have a 11% settler's chance, that's 0.11 times 2.5. On average, he's only going to grow it by 2.75 per month, while it's growing at much, much more than that, like 15. So there's like no reason to keep him there, really, once it gets above like 900, 950. Let's recall him, and hack I'm just going to recall both. Now the next question is, do we want... <clears throat> I think, I don't know, how quickly can my subject colonize? I'm not, I'm used to the colonies from the subjects being so, so slow, but... Like, he started his, he's at 131, I'm already ahead of him by 100, so... Maybe I'll just give him uh, one more province, just, just to guarantee that we get that merchant a little bit earlier. We'll do that. And then, same argument could be applied to, to getting the second merchant from this colonial region. But at the same time, I could also get a second, sorry, third colonial nation started, which means another merchant, another colonist all together. I think we'll go like Colonial Columbia, depending on development. It's pretty god-awful, actually. Probably because it's scaling it based on the entirety of over here. Could go to like Chesapeake. I think that's within range already. But how's that gonna stop Castile from like creating a colonial nation over here? He's Catholic. If I if I just get all of the colonial regions that he can reach, then no matter what he has to violate the Treaty of Tordesillas. He's definitely not going to be able to reach Colonial Eastern America. So I think despite the development, I'm going to go for something in this area. Uh, 
I don't want these guys to westernize, though. To get my tech, so we're going to skip Cartagena. Panama is an important natural harbor, but... No. That's actually part of the Caribbean, isn't it? Hmm. All right, we start here then. All right, cool. Well, I am going to take a short break here. Uh, not a huge amount got done in this this last episode, but you know, getting my get my feet wet again, getting used to this this campaign will be interesting. Novgorod just lost some land, cool. I'm gonna risk poking out, see if we can find what else is in this guy's territory. But yeah, for now, I'm gonna take a break here. I'll be back in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.